special um, proposals for Mega Cebu Development Authority, Leyte Ecological Industrial Zone, and Bulacan Airport City. Uh, I would like to recognize Senator Lapid, kung meron po kayong comment tungkol dito sa economic zone, at uh, alam naman natin yung Port City, pagkakas na kasi sa Pangangang. At uh, in the next chance, I will call on Comsec. Comsec, paki-off na lang yung ambient sound mo kasi medyo maingay. I'd like to call on uh, Comsec and Agas to uh, recognize the different resource persons. Uh, good morning, Senator, and good morning for our guests. For today's agenda, as mentioned by Senator Marcos, we have Senate uh, Bill Number 1037. And for House Bill 6489, I would like to apologize kasi nagkaroon po ng typo. Ang naipadala ko po ay 6469. It should have been 6489 for the Leyte Ecological Industrial Zone. And House Bill 7575, Bulacan Airport City Economic Zone, Economic Zone and Freeport Act. Our guest for today, representing the Department of Finance, we have Attorney Karen Ann Yambao, the RRD Legal Service of the Bureau of Customs. For the National Economic Development, we have Ms. Criselle Santos, the Infra Staff Representative of the Bulacan Airport. For PESA, we have invited Attorney Vincent C., but has not logged in yet, and Mr. Alim Siddique Giapal. For the Mega Cebu Development Act... Pating na ba yung PESA o wala pa rin? Hindi, hindi pa po dumarating, sen na, hindi pa po naglalag, Senator. Sa bagay, meron naman silang position paper eh. Opo, pinadala ko po. Uh -oh. So for the department... Ay. Sige, go the on. Department of Trade and Industry, we have OIC Director Ernesto de los Reyes. And for the Are you again? Are you again? I'm sorry. Kasi nagkakaproblema ako. Wala akong makikita ang video. Kukunti lang kung this is Senator Lapid. Na siyang bidang-bida dito. <laughs> may, may we request may re we request our guests to, to share their video with us so that the Senator can see all of you. Ah, ayan, ayan. Yan ka, Senator. <laughs> ayan, ayan. Parang malungkot eh pag wala nakikita. Go, go, go. Sige, carry on. For the province of Cebu, representing uh, Governor Gwen Garcia, we have Mr. Frank Dinsay, the Chief of Staff of Cebu. Good morning, Paul. For the, Maxan, for the Maxan Economic Zone, we have their secretary, Mr. Porfirio Dodon Montes Claros. Good morning, good morning. Uh, there have been several <clears throat> representatives from Peel Export Cebu, but they have not logged in yet. Mm. Okay. For the Leyte Eco Ecological Industrial Zone, we have from the Department of Trade and Industry, Director Raquel Echage, OIC Director, Resource-Based Industries Service. For the Municipality of Isabel Leyte, we have Mayor Saturnino M. Medina. From the Governor's Office of Leyte, we have Ms. Jessine Ramos, the Tourism Officer, and Mr. Raul Jola, the Provincial Planning Officer. Hindi ko nakikita sa Tagalete. Ay, pangawaray-waray. Ay, ayaw pala. Ayan. Mupay nga aga, ma'am. Mupay nga aga. Mupay nga aga. Hindi hapon. Oo, hino pa din. Okay. Next. Sige, Bert. For the Bulacan Airport City Special Economic Zone, from DTI as well, we have Director Angelita Arcelliana. From the Department of Tori, uh, Transportation, they are represented by USEC Ruben S. Reynoso Jr., the Undersecretary for Planning and Project Development. We also have USEC Gary de Guzman and General Manager Edmond Real. AAP also wanted to be represented by Engineer Arnold Baculatin. And from the... Uh, Yes, I'd like to recognize our uh, majority leader, Mig Subiri. Ayan pala eh. Good morning, okay. Senator. From the province of Bulacan, we have Governor Daniel R. Fernando and uh, San Miguel Aero City Incorporated. 
uh, wants to be represented by Attorney Melissa Tagarda, their president, and Mr. Edgar Dona, the head of operations. That's all, Senator. Yes, thank you very much. I'd also like to recognize my uh, hardworking colleague, Senator Francis Tolentino. Thank you very much for attending this hearing. And, thank you, good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. So, apparently, I'm with Tagihapon, Maupay Ngaga. Okay, Beth, umpisa tayo. <laughs> so we start with Mega Cebu Development Authority. Um, I think that seems to be the first one. And uh, apparently, shall we hear the uh, different uh, resource people for uh, Mega Cebu? Or do we start, let's start with the basic principles na lang muna. Uh, we call on DOF, NEDA, and PESA. So, Attorney Yambao, please, mauna na po kayo kasi may position ng DOF sa lahat ng economic zone. Alam ko na. Apo. Please proceed. DOC, you're recognized. Good morning. Good morning, Senators. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um... I am from the Bureau of Customs, so I'm not really part of the comments or recommendations of the BO, of the DOF. But um, on the part of the BOC, we have no opposition or any. We really don't have any comments, and we we defer to the to the knowledge of the of this committee regarding the the proposed bill. Yeah, I have a problem because uh, the DOF has uh, repeatedly um, posited their opposition against any new economic zone since it will erode the tax base. Uh, but now you are saying on the part of the BOC, okay lang. Alin ba talaga? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Senator, but I'm from the BOC, so I really have no hand on the comments of the DOF. I see. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much, Attorney Yambao. But uh, Comsec, uh, what do we do? Because DOF has in uh, many other hearings, as well as uh, hearings in this committee, stated their opposition to the erosion of their tax. Wala na, wala, wala bang pinadala ang DOF? Opo, yun lang po ang pinadala niya po, yung taga, ano po, yung BOC po representative. Okay. I was also wondering uh, uh, bakit si, yun ang pinadala nila. Okay, okay, with uh, all due respect and uh, grateful in any case to Attorney Yambao's, uh, Yambao and her presence. Madam um, Chair, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, it's me. Yes, yes, maybe urge uh, yeah. that uh, the DOF uh, be apprised and uh, be urged to uh, uh, present or uh, submit a, prop, a, a formal position as they have in the past. Yes, uh, Majority Leader, I'd also like to recognize Senator Nancy Binay. Majority Leader, Thank please. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, the BOC will not object to this because, for example, like the Bulacan yeah. Airport, marami papasok na turista, siyempre magdadala ng mga Louis Vuitton yan, mga yan, yeah. siyempre, makakasingil sila. <laughs> They'll earn more money. <laughs> more import, more uh, more income. Thank you. Actually, Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Ang uh, NEDA, please, nandito daw si Director Endensha. Uh, uh, hello. Andito Good morning, ba Senator. Uh, yeah. I am representing Director Endensha. This is Assistant Director Cynthia Villena. Okay. Hi. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, for for the eco zones, ma'am, we are also reiterating the policy stance of the cabinet economic team uh, on that the creation of more tax-free zones does not always guarantee economic success, and that communities may even lose out if the cost of giving up revenues exceed the perceived benefits of having the zones because of the lost opportunities. So given the fiscal implications of the ECOZONE bills, the establishment of ECOZONES or Freeport should have a thorough assessment of the costs and benefits to make sure that this would be beneficial to the government and the rest of the country. At the minimum, there should be a master plan taking into account the larger national 
and regional contexts and which will identify which areas of the country would benefit from such eco zones and which activities in these eco zones should be supported. That is all, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very grateful, uh, Ms. Miliana, that you're here because you actually uh, represent that uh, opinion from uh, the DOF. Salamat. So we have Madam your Chair. Yes, Senator Binay, please. Okay, ano lang kay Ms. Villena. Kasi di ba parang nabanggit niya na it does not guarantee, automatic guarantee, yung may mga eco zones will develop, oh, and man. will ano, bring development in sa area. Can you cite certain instances kung saan may mga uh, natayo na economic zone na hindi nag-benefit? Um, eh, uh, Ma'am, I would just like to cite a, a study um, um, in 2018 alone, the government granted 518 billion or 2.8 percent of, uh, of uh, GDP and an estimated amount of also an estimated amount of 541 billion in 2019. Uh, but uh, the in the I don't have the exact revenues right now. Madam Chair. Maybe we can request um, on the basis of the query of Senator Binay, let's request please the uh, data on eco zones, their uh, cost benefit uh, analysis um, as uh, up to date as, as up to date as we can possibly have. Yes, yes Majority Leader. Yes, ma'am. We will, we will submit, ma'am. Okay, uh, Senator Binay. I am uh, mixed. Naka, naka mute ka. Sorry. Migs? Yes, Nans. Uh, Senator Binay, please. Sure. Kasi di ba, nabanggit niya din, uh, Ms. Bellena, na kailangan may thorough study, may master plan. Yung tatlong pending na eco zone, meron na ba yung NEDA na pag-aaral kung viable itong tatlong eco zone na uh, uh, nag apply sa amin ngayon? Uh, ma'am, hindi po kami yung mag-gagawa uh, po ng mga uh, feasibility studies on these eco zones, ma'am proponent, meron na silang uh, study. Hindi ba dapat yung NEDA yung nag-verify uh, kung tama talaga yung ginawa nilang study? Or is it another agency? With... Ma'am Pesa po, we'll also look at it, ma'am. Ang alam ko, nag-submit na yung mga yan. Uh, pero ang question nga, sino bang mag assess ng master plan? Yes, Madam Chair, di ba dapat somebody from government would verify kung karapat dapat nga na bigyan natin ng uh, itong mga economic zone na to kung viable ba kung tama ba yung ginawa nilang master plan hindi ba dapat ang NEDA NEDA ba ang nag-aassess o pesa lang uh, so uh, ako po hindi ko pa pa nakikita yung uh, feasibility study or any master plan but i think uh, pesa po yung lead po for the uh, evaluation of this uh, documents ma'am Ah, Madam Chair, maybe for submission na lang kung meron pagdating dun sa viability study from PESA. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You, Madam uh, Chair. I see the I I see uh I see the majority leader speaking. Are you there? Or ibang meeting yan? <laughs> Mix. Okay lang. Okay, I uh, would like to recognize at this point the Bulacan governor Dan Fernandez. Thank you. Um, he's also here. Yes, Beth. Good morning, Governor. Good morning. So, Beth, is there anyone from PESA, Sina Attorney C, and uh, the others from PESA? Also, Hindi pa po sila naglalag, eh, Senator? Uh, okay. But we sent them already the link. Yes, in any case, we have the PESA position here. So, yung position paper na submit nung August pa. So, kompleto naman tayo. At uh, maritaling naman PESA is in support. Pero ang kanilang position is that there is no need for an enabling law for individual eco zones. Uh, no need to legislate daw. Kaya na daw ng PESA under their framework na magtatag ng eco zone. So in other words, Nancy, uh, Senator Binay, 
Dapat yung master plan hindi pupunta sa pesa, parati sila mag-oo. <laughs> Kasi yan ang mandate nila. Dapat yata mag, ang mag-a-assess yung uh, neutral party, kumbaga NEDA or someone else, DTI man lang. Parang yung pesa, automatic yan eh. Kasi yan ang charter nila, di ba? Siyempre gusto Ayan. nila, the more, the better for them. Diba? Oo nga, oo nga. Pesa pa more. Ayun. Okay. So with that, let's proceed to Mega Cebu Development Authority. Um, I have here DTI. Would you like to uh, state your position, please? San yung DTI ng Cebu? OIC Director De Los Reyes, Ernesto, or Director Dominguez? Beth, andyan ba sila? I'd like to recognize Senator uh, Sherwin Gatchalian. This is your old committee, so help us along. Naglag in na po si ano, o IC Director Ernesto de los Reyes. I see, I see. Uh, Mr. De los Reyes, are you in? Uh, I think I see your, I see your, I see your, uh, uh, your in. Yeah, ma'am, I'm from Board of Investment. Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, Manila office, uh, not from Cebu. Uh, oh, okay. Are your BOI, not the yeah. DTI? Yeah. Oh, in any case, what is uh, the BOI uh, position in all of this? Peter, uh, ma'am, andito po yung aming uh, taga-policy. Uh, I'm from Investment Assistance Service of the BOI. Okay, then... Uh, uh, so may I... Uh, our legal uh, uh, attorney Ian. Okay, attorney, asan ka ba? Attorney, anong buong pangalan, please? Ian. Ian. Uh. Okay, you're recognized. Are you there? Beth? Committee Secretary, uh... Uh, Senator, uh... I requested ano, the Department of Trade and Industry to submit to me their representatives for the meeting and they were the ones that given to me by their ano, by their office. That's why it is stated anyway, here that for the it province... It doesn't matter. All I need to know is nandiyan ba yung POI na si Attorney Ikimala uh, it, it is not ano, it is not mentioned in the ano... Uh, the one that are representing them should be yes, I read the the I read that I have Ian. None, sir. Ma'am. Baka naka ano po siya kay ano, kay OIC de los Reyes. Hindi. Uh, ayaw nga niya eh. Uh -huh. Anyway, ma'am, uh, our position here, ma'am, uh, we support the economic, uh, oh. another economic zone. Yes. Uh, makapatulong ito sa generation ng jobs. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, Beth, Beth, Beth. Can you, can you mute your mic, please? Because I can hear you and it's causing static. Yes, I'd like to call. Okay, with the support of the BOI and the DTI, uh, let me call on the province of Cebu because I have in, in my possession the uh, letters from uh, Governor Gwen Garcia. And Mr. Frank Dinsai is recognized to represent and uh, speak on her behalf. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, who is here at great sacrifice. And uh, <laughs> thank and you. Go ahead and watch. Uh, Mr. Frank Dinsai, nakita kita kanina. Yes. Where's Frank? Frank Dinsai, please. Beth, is Frank Dinsai there? Mr. Frank Dinsai? Yes, so he's here. Yes, uh, you're recognized, Mr. Dinsai. Please uh, speak on behalf of the province of Cebu. Mr. Frank Dinsai, are you there? Yes, Senator. Uh-oh, okay. Senator? 
Yes, you're recognized, Lisa. The, uh, the friends of Basibu uh, have submitted some amendments that they'd like to uh, include virtually all of Cebu. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, yeah, Senator. Um, actually, if we go to Section 3, um, we would want Sana to include, uh, to make. I'm sorry you're breaking up. We're not hearing you very well. Can you please uh, speak closer to the mic? Uh, we we would want to include in section yeah, 3. I understand uh, you want to include Toledo and Bogo. Yeah, that's it. And also for section 5, we might add, um, it mentions constitution and jurisdiction of Mega Cebu Development Authority, uh, but I think this limits it only to Cebu and Mandawe, if I understand correctly. Perhaps it should also, it should be, uh, it should take a holistic approach, such as to include Cebu. So what are you saying to include, what are you saying? It mentions only, um, for purpose of this act, the MCDA shall comprise the core metropolitan area embracing the highly urbanized cities of Cebu and Mandawe. I think it's self-limiting, uh, Senator, such that uh, for purposes of jurisdiction, the entire Cebu. What do you mean the entire Cebu? Well, we're only talking about metropolitan Cebu. So what you're saying uh, should include Lapu-Lapu, is it? Yeah, Lapu-Lapu. And then I think because we're talking about I think the whole Cebu senator, entire Cebu. No, I think that that's really not, the, uh, with all due respect, we have uh, Senator Tolentino here who ran the MMDA. And as we know very well, yung mga probinsya na sinasakupan, hindi naman lahat kinuha ng MMDA. Yep. For example, the province of Rizal, in spite of the fact that its capital is actually a classic city, uh, did not include the entire province. The same is true for Bulacan, where only Valenzuela is actually a part of uh, the Metro Manila Authority as a former mayor, Senator Gatchalia knows well. So kapag metropolitan, hindi naman ibig sabihin lahat ng probinsya sasakupin. Tama po ba yun? Because uh, from the letter of uh, Governor Garcia, I get the impression that she wants the entire province included. Yeah, that's so, correct, that's correct which sort of defeats the purpose of having a metropolitan authority. Um, okay, well taken, but I understand your concerns. Um, yes. Yeah, my concern is uh, to ask from uh, the Metro Manila senators, Senator Tolentino and Senator Gatchalian. I, uh, I'm sure you had a look at the bill. May concern lang ako na pareho sa Metro Manila yung issue natin. What is the advantage of a Metro Cebu kung parating nahihirapan na mag-implement ng iba't ibang batas? Hindi ba that's the same issue we have and that's why there are amendments pending for Metro Manila? Maybe, uh, Senator Francis, we'll invite you. Uh, may tulong ba talaga ito o panggulo lang another layer of authority sa traffic, solid waste, and so on? Uh, with the permission of my colleagues, uh, it will help, ma'am. Uh, I, I still recall that prior to my assumption as Metro Manila Chair, I had a long conversation uh, with uh, the first Metro Manila Chair, uh, yeah, First Lady Imelda Romualdez Marcos. To learn some uh, lessons, it helps uh, because if you if you will if you will look at current events, decision making now of IATF, especially the decision that will be handed out by the president tonight, later tonight, yeah. uh, relative to the G GCQ MGCQ, uh, the president and the IATF deferred to the Metro Manila mayors. Correct. So in instances of public health, not just traffic, not just garbage. The association, the conglomeration of local authorities through a formal uh, body such as the MMDA and, if possible, a forthcoming body such as the Mega Cebu Development Authority would help not just in institutionalizing uh, efforts relative to development, traffic, housing, etc., and what have you, in a more 
unified fashion. Of course, there will be some uh, there will be some uh, opposition. There will be some uh, uh, negative uh, statements. But in the end, similar to what we have in Metro Tokyo, it it fosters uh, it bodes well for a an a uh, uh, an a conglomerated uh, uh, development. Uh, move uh, similar to uh, Metro Manila, although th there are some defects, uh, it is better than having none. Uh, I, I've seen that I've seen that in, of course, politics can uh, rear its ugly head, but I, I think it's 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 an event that have been uh, waiting since years, years ago in Cebu. I, I talked with some uh, private uh, developers in Cebu, some former mayors that they envisioned to have a Cebu Metropolitan Authority decades ago. I think uh, it is needed, uh, similar to what will be needed perhaps in Dabao or in Cagayan de Oro. So we have, we have lessons learned from Metro Manila, and we can uh, correct, recorrect uh, uh, if we if we do that in in this through this bill uh, for the Mega Cebu Development Authority, and even Senator Gachalian can can share some uh, lessons learned. Na Senator Nancy Binay, whose father was also Metropolitan Manila. Manila chairman before. Yeah, he was the head of yeah. NCR, that's correct. Yes, yeah, so including your mother. So I, 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 I am in support of this uh, measure, uh, Madam Chairman, and I hope that Cebuanos as well can uh, uh, appreciate that this is a proposal that has been waiting in the wings for such a long period of time. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, manifestation of support. And uh, um, for Attorney Frank, uh, kasama naman dito si Bumandawe, Lapu-Lapu, Danao, Talisay, Karkar. So they're all actually included. They're not uh, um, uh, forgotten. So would anyone else like to comment? Uh, ang aking idadagdag lang siguro, like Metro Manila, siguro kailangan yung mga national agencies, uh, may representation rin sa board. Kasi sa Metro Manila, ang pagkaalam ko, for example, parating hotly contested, DOTC at saka DPWH. Wala kasi sila dito sa bill. Perhaps we can uh, add that. Um, any uh, comments, please? From uh, Senator Binay and Senator Gatchalian. Opa. Madam Chair? Yeah. Nance. Oh, siguro nga, as mentioned, my father was MMDA chair, if I'm, I think twice or three times. <laughs> and lagi niyang sinasabi na, um, di ba kasi sa Metro Manila, yung MMDA, hindi siya elected eh. Hindi. Di ba? So parang medyo kulang sa ipen. Kasi at the end of the day, it's Kulay the mayor. Walang ipen pala. Because it's the mayors who will decide ko ano yung uh, gusto nilang gawin, di ba? So pagdating dito sa Metro Cebu, paano mare-reconcile in cases kung saan hindi magkakasundo yung provincial government with the development, with the Metro Cebu Development Authority? Um, I think the sense is na parang executive director, enforcer yung MMDA kahit hindi siya elected. But yes, uh, that subject has been broached numerous times na parang uh, ano naman ang clout ng MMDA na pasunurin yung mga mayor. Eh, napakasiga ng mga NCR mayor natin, alam naman natin, eh, kinakailangan yung kooperasyon nila. Kundi pakiusapan na lang eh, purus ganun ano. Ayat ta iba iba rin ang pasok. So, um, is yes, there sir. So para isa yun dun sa kailangan siguro ng ayusin pag uh, na-approve itong authority na to. Yung mga ganoong um, intramurals on the ground when it comes to the implementation. Siguro Francis, pwede bang ganon kapag nag-agree na sila sa guidelines? Halimbawa, pag nagpirmahin yung mga mayor together with the MMDA sa guidelines, if they sign, ano, kung nagpirmahan sila uh, na ito ang gagawin, halimbawa sa COVID, kung MGCQ o GCQ, kung ano man yung utos ni Presidente, tapos i work out nila yung guidelines, kapag nagpirmahan, bound na lahat. Pwede bang ganon? Are you addressing that to me, uh, Madam Chair? 
Yes, yes, Senator Tolentino. Because uh, as Nancy is saying, wala nga ngipin. Ang laging reklamo ng papa niya, ni Vice Binay, eh laging nga nga wala ngipin pagkat uh, yun nga, hindi naman sila halal. Eh, yung mga NCR mayors, ang titindi. So, paano mo pa susunod yung uh, mga implementing guidelines, yung mga... And in fact, Madam Chair, siguro just to add it ba, um, aside from the MMDA, meron yung Metro, Metro Manila Authority ba yun? Na kung saan yung mga mayors kailangan nila pagbotohan kung ano yung pwedeng i-implement ng uh, MMDA. Ganun yes, yung, no. ganun Tama, yung no. ano, peculiarity pagdating sa uh, function ng MMDA, di ba? At the end of the day, parang nakasukob lang sila dun sa magiging collegial decision ng mga mayors. That's right. Ang swayam ko na lang siguro yeah. dahil so far, uh, uh, ano ba, maganda naman yung working relationship ng mga mayors, kaya nai-implement ng MMDA. But you know, there's also that possibility na hindi magiging ganun yung relationship. So, kumbaga dapat paghandaan na natin yung scenario na ganun, di ba? To avoid uh, conflicts and uh, madelay yung mga implementation ng projects. If I may respond, uh, just a yes, bit. Uh, during, during my during my days, uh, the, the Metro Manila Council was chaired by me by this representation. As I as I know it today, it's now being headed by a Metro Manila uh, Mayor, si Mayor Olivares of Paranaque. So I think they're rotating it. But during my days, ako yung chairman din ng ng council. But I, I think for Cebu, it would be better if you have a rotating chairmanship coming from the Cebu, Met Cebu mayors para yung concern ni uh, Senator Bina ay ma-address na hindi naman elected. Ang ginawa ko kasi noon, Senator Aimi and uh, Senator Bina, alam ni Senator Gatchel yan, pinakisamahan ko na lang mabuti yung mga Metro Manila mayors. Ayun na lang. Uh, ginawa kong inaanak sa, sa kasal si Olivare, <laughs> kumpare ko si Malapitan. Professional so, Bino! Very close yung relationship, pati si Junjun Binay. Very close kami lahat. Kaya wala kami problema. Wala kami naging problema na. So sa Cebu siguro, given uh, the political dynamics, mas maganda siguro rotating yung chairmanship. But there should be one one uh, administrative head, whether it is a general manager or what, uh, to, to handle the day-to-day -day activities. Yun lang okay. po ang magandang chairman. That's a great suggestion. Uh, former Mayor Sherwin Gatsalian and now our Senator. Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, tawag ko nga sa uh, uh, MMDA, patching bag po yan eh. Dahil uh, kailangan naman natin maraming problema ho na hindi mo lulutas. Kaya ang dapat po isa lang yung chairman para masisi. Kaya nga yung mga presidente, Kung meron mo sila kagawin na politiko, sigurado lagay niyo sa MMDA, talo na ho yan. No? For, with the exception of uh, Senator Francis, no, na nanalo. But uh, Madam Chair, my, my uh, suggestion is, the same with Senator Francis, to study the weaknesses of uh, MMDA. Uh, definitely, po, the strengths will be coordination. In a metropolitan area, you really need to coordinate. Coordinate in terms of roads, coordinate in terms of waterways, coordinate in terms of transportation. Like for example, po, ang subway, hindi naman po pwede, uh, hindi po interconnected ng subway. And also garbage, parang ang batura lumalaki. Pero yung coordination mo, may business rin mo, dahil maraming yung hindi sumusunod. Uh, what is the use of coordination if one of the cities will not, uh, uh, will not uh, comply? So I think um, uh, I agree with Senator Bina na lagyan po ng ngipin, uh, but the process of doing that is to study the weaknesses of um, of uh, the current MMDA and we can plug those weaknesses. For example, po, one of the things that I noticed ko, and Chairman Francis uh, might agree, um, for example, meron pong, uh, for example, po yung paggagawa ko ng isang infrastructure sa Manila, uh, Lagyan mo natin na mas malaking boses dahil DPWH and DOTR can override or can actually opt not to listen to MMDA. But you all know that MMDA is the collegial body. Eh, pero kung sabi ng DOTR or DPWH ayaw ko ito, walang magagawa po ang MMDA. So um, I think by process, we can uh, study the weakness. We can invite the uh, fourth chairman, Tolentino, being the, the uh, former chairman, and also... 
some members of the current MMDA to give us uh, some of their analysis that we can use to improve this Metropolitan Cebu. And I support Metropolitan Cebu dahil pag pumupunta ko tayo doon, yung dating 10 minutes from airport to downtown, ngayon doon, dalawang oras na. No? Because you have to uh, pass through Mactan, you have to pass through Mandawa. So we need to uh, come up with a coordinated body so that yung mga ganitong infrastructure problems, uh, they can uh, uh, build a seamless uh, infrastructure or seamless transportation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Senator Gatchelian. That's absolutely correct. At uh, nakita natin, mas malala na yung traffic sa Cebu kesa sa Manila, lalo na kung tatawid ka ng tulay. So, thanks very much for the support. Um, are there any other uh, comments about the Cebu uh, Economic Zone? Mactan, perhaps we should call on uh, 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 Mr. Montes Claros and the other two are here. Meron pa bang uh, gusto magsalita tungkol sa Cebu? Who hasn't been uh, called? Uh, Mr. Dondon Montes Claros, Dodon. Yeah. Of, uh, Maps. I, I heard a very alarming statistic this morning. And dami daw na jobless. Yes, yes, very, very alarming. Now, I would say that if this um, authority will enhance our investment share, attract more jobs, I am fully. Personally, I'm in support. I'm sure that our officers also will support this as well. Thank you. Is uh, there anyone from Phil Export Cebu who uh, would like to uh, have a word? Senator, there was no one who logged in. That's all right. <clears throat> if that's the case, we take the advisement of uh, our NCR senators, Francis Tolentino, Nancy Bina, as well as Sherwin Gatchalian, in the formulation of our committee report. And uh, we craft a sure. as possible. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm sure. Mine, uh, of course, I'll be remiss if I do not support this measure, being that I'm Thank fellow you. Bisdak, no? Bisaya, Giapon. Um, <laughs> And my grandfather, my, my grand uncle, rather, the also, no, actually, my uncle, he's the first cousin of my father, was based in Cebu, si Iyo Carpio. Iyo Carpio, the, uh, um, the uh, writer and uh, singer of the song Matud Nila. Wow. Yeah, which your mother also used to sing once in a while, uh, Mom Aimee. Always, and, uh, always. Yeah, so, so Ben Zubiri. So yes, I'd be remiss not to support this. I want I fully support the the uh, concept of having an eco zone, not only limited to the particular eco zones that are there now in Napulapu, but uh, spread out into the other areas of uh, Mandawe and uh, Cebu City, and uh, of course the other towns, outlying towns. So you have my support in this, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Yes, um, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes, Francis. Uh, Senator. Course, uh, during the period of amendments, perhaps some some of the functions of DOTR, especially LTFRB, would have to be devolved and shared with this mega Cebu uh, Development Authority, because I I foresee that that would be a headache in the days ahead. I've experienced that uh, there has to be some. Uh, devolution on the part of uh, some of our transport agencies. Sana po yung DOTR nandiyan, maintindihan nila yan. Yes, that's a, that's a very wise uh, suggestion derived from years of experience. Thank you very much. So let's proceed, therefore, to Leyte Ecological Industrial Zone Act. Madam Chair, if I may, yes. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Joel. Thank you. First of all, uh, mayong buntag, Madam Chair, mayong buntag sa tanan. Uh, I'd like to just spread into the records my my sincere support to uh, to this particular measure no in the province of Cebu uh, malapit sa atin yung mga Cebuano marami tayong kaibigan po dyan. but uh, madam chair may, may I just raise something that uh, is not just in this uh, particular area but uh, in all in compassing perhaps in almost all of the uh, the bills that we are tackling today I think it is important to note that uh, uh, um, the creation of economic zones and the likes somehow uh, contribute to the rise of uh, casinos, online gambling, etc. And I'd be particular with Pogo. For example, in Cebu, in September 
2019, last year, 181 Chinese workers were arrested by uh, PNP doon po sa bandang Lapu-Lapu City for uh, violating cybercrime. Doon pong company na Sinwang Jin Chen uh, operated a 12-story building in Lapu-Lapu was raided uh, last year um, after eight months of surveillance conducted by PNP. And uh, this consequently uh, resulted to uh, the arrest of 181 illegal uh, foreign workers. So two things, Madam Chair. No? One is uh, how we'll be able to protect uh, uh, our jobs here. We have been talking about it. Uh, yung Filipino first, talagang napaka napaka importante po niyan and uh, uh, secondly uh, we wanted to make sure na hindi tayo mag uh, produce ng maraming pogos na kung saan uh, hindi pa rin maayos yung regulating uh, uh, policies natin uh, we don't know if if we are going to let pagcor do its thing dahil nakita rin natin yung kapalpakan nila for uh, many uh, years now and uh, especially the past two three years but if you are to give the authority naman to the uh, economic zones to this uh, 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 eco zones uh, what are we expecting no because it happened also in uh, in uh, if I recall uh, in 2020 in uh, 2019 or 2018 if I recall in Clark Air Base where we were able to uh, arrest uh, some uh, uh, close to 5,000 if I'm not mistaken illegal Chinese workers so yung bottom line lang ho natin dito is one is to protect jobs and two we make sure na na I mean yung, yung, yung rice nung hindi natin gusto na illegal uh, operating pogos eh mangyari na naman tumaas yung criminality uh, last year, and po yung uh, records ng PNP, tumaas yung uh, uh, money laundering activities, tumaas yung uh, 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 pagbebenta ng, uh, I mean, ng prostitution, etc. So, these are the things that uh, I have I have very strong reservations, but uh, I, uh, I'm glad that our governor, Bulacan Governor Daniel Fernando is here with us, and uh, I'd like to acknowledge him and uh, thank him for, for, for his support because I know that these are very important uh, issues that we also need to tackle to, to make sure that our people, our country uh, are protected. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks very much. And uh, I think, uh, Senator Villanueva, you're in the right direction. The trend of the time seems to be that the Pogos are leaving whole hog given the imposition and the demand for payment of taxes. So, nagsisi alisan mukang 100 ang aalis itong uh, taong ito at uh, be 20 na lang matitira so far na alam natin. Uh, Thank you very much for the Thank you for Thank you for uh, 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 saying that because I think I have to make sure that we'll, this will also be raised. Yung, yung, yung issue ng taxes, thank you for raising that because uh, about 50 billion uh, worth of uh, taxes yung unpaid ho last year. And uh, we wanted to make sure lang na, uh, you know, I, I'm really against all forms of gambling, be it legal or illegal. But I'm not an extremist. But if they're paying taxes, it's legal, then... Uh, uh, it, it's okay, no. But uh, yung yung illegal, it, it, it's there's no room uh, for illegal operations to work in this country. Thank you, Madam Chair, again. Okay, maraming salamat. Proceed tayo on the note of gambling dito sa Leyza. Yung sa Leyte Ecological. Eh, ang liwaliwanag dito, explicit ang statement na kasama ang gambling. Uh, in the later zone, it's allowed specifically to be under the supervision of PAGCOR. Ito yung uh, sa Leyte. Can we call on uh, the province of Leyte, the municipality of Isabel, and si Mayor Medina, and also the DTI, if they would like to comment on Leyte. At saka, nagtataka lang ako, bakit ecological pa? Uh, is uh, is there someone from Leyte? I think kanina narinig ko. Yes, Madam sir. Chair. Yes, na. Nandiyan na ba si Nandiyan na ba si Peza? Baka we can already include them then dun sa mag uh, bibigay ng uh, position. Ano ba si Peza? Wala, wala pa. pa po, Senator. Wala oh, pa wala po. Wala pa din. Parang okay. siya napakahalaga dito. Pero, pero alam mo, sila nag-submit eh. Mula sa Paul, nag-submit sila lahat. 
Parating support eh. Parating support ang PESA syempre kasi mandato nila at uh, ang concern lang nila bakit daw kailangan pa ng uh, ng bago katas samantalang nandoon na yung uh, man, ng, yung charter nila. Yun okay. lang. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Dia. Is there anyone from Leyte who would like to speak? The representative of the governor, kanina nandyan, at saka yung uh, mayor of Isabel, si Mayor Medina. Uh, Secretary Beth, can you please uh, apprise them? Mayor Medina. Nakalag in po si Mayor Medina. That's right. And also, uh, I, I heard Miss Jessin Ramos kanina. Jessin Ramos. Kanina po binati yes. na po kayo. That's right. Saka si Mr. Raul Jola from yes. the province of Leyte lahat. Yes, who, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, Jessin Ramos. Uh, yes, is the province in... Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Hello. Oh, oh, yeah. Good morning. Is, um, is the province in support of this Leyte Eco Zone? Um, I I believe po the province is in support naman po for the uh, anything that is for the good of the province uh, and also, syempre si Governor Petilia. Pero regarding po, po this uh, uh, certain and the LISA, uh, we, we just received, uh, sa aking part po, uh, we were asked to attend last Friday lang. So, Parang medyo uh, siguro kulang pa kami ng info and discussion also sa aming part. But uh, with regards naman po sa Pero matagal uh, na to. Uh, ano ng province. Matagal na to. Ay, okay po. Um, yeah. Going on for a while actually. Mm -hmm. um, siguro po, ba baka ibang office lang po yung umaten sa aming, sa aming part. Pero sa akin okay. po parang... Yes. If yung a... yung sal yung sal Siringa na, okay siringa na lahi governor nga ko an um, then we request the governor to please submit on uh, that note uh, we also have uh, miss alvero miss corazon alvero from the province uh, we'd like to request a position paper from the province of uh, leyte from um, governor nick pitilia um to uh, state their official position um, in support for uh, this episode uh, if uh, there is such a support. Ms. Alvero, anong position uh, ng probinsya dyan? Uh, you're mute. Please turn on your audio. Ms. Alvero, I can't hear you. There we go. Hello, good morning po. Yes. Ma'am Aimee, good morning po. Mga pa'y nga agahain mo. Anyway, this has been for the last two years. There was a study. The, uh, the, the, the main agency that was responsible on this was the DTI in cooperation with the NEDA. And as of today, there is an ongoing study or draft master plan for the late ecological industrial zone. So that's what we have. It's a draft master plan formulated by the Palata Fox. So as of the moment, it's only... It's only this document that we have, but there were uh, deliberations on this project at the NEDA through the National Economic and Development Authority, Region A. So okay. this is a well, um, well sought after project. Uh, so um, essentially, That's also, essentially is taken the care province, of. in principle, yes, the province is in support. Is that correct? Yes, Opo. Yes, Pop, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you also. Right. Thank you. Nice. Maupay nga aga nga tanan ha imo. Thank you, ma'am. Si Mayor, si Mayor Medina ada. Mayor Medina, I saw him uh, log in kanina. Waray pa? Yes, uh, Beth, come sec please. Si Mayor Medina, nandiyan? Opo, nakalag-in pa rin po siya. Hindi naman po siya umaalis. Nandito ma'am, dito ma'am, ma Jun Medina. Good morning. Yes, yes, Manong Jun. Okay, hi. How are you? Oh, I'm very fine ma'am. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, ma'am. May we have the position? Kasi yes. nag-submit ka mo ng surat. Yes, Mayor, please. Uh, Okay. 
Exchange sa Leyte. May It will be more than half. At saka kung pwede, huwag nang isama yung uh, Ma'am, we will be more than happy. Okay. Kung matutuloy yan dito sa atin sa Leyte. Okay. Dahil malaki may tutulong yan sa lahat ng mamamayan dito. At saka kung pwede, huwag na lang isama yung gambling. I see, I see. Pareho, may supporter ka kay Senator Villanueva. Ang gambling, ma'am, dahil yan ang magiging uh, punot dulo ng lahat ng kaguluhan eh. Totoo. Yung gambling eh. I see, I see. Inalaw natin ang gambling dito. Papa, papasok, ma'am, pati yung mga illegal gambling. Ah, papa, pero... Wag na lang yun, ma'am, para maayos ang peace and order natin dito. Oo, para wala kang sakit. Yun lang, ma'am, ang masasabi ko. Maski yung mga pogo, ayaw ninyo kahit uh, kahit uh, foreigners yung nagagambling. Ay, hindi na ma'am. Huwag na lang yan. Total, marami naman dyan sa Manila at sa Asboy. Okay. Oo. Oh. Alright. I understand. May, may sulat kayo about gross income and uh, special taxes. So, this is well taken, Mayor June. Uh, Adia Akon. So, I will uh, take this into consideration, including the preferential hiring, syempre, ng ating mga taga Isabel. Salamat, ma'am. Maraming maraming salamat. Madam Chair. Malaking blessing yan dito sa amin. Thank you, Thank very you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Yes, Senator uh, got, uh, Senator Villanueva, please. Yes, Madam Chair, just one question to Mayor Medina. Just one question, Mayor. Uh, una, gusto kong batiin ka and uh, I'd like to commend your vision for uh, Isabel Leyte at uh, yung paninindigan mo na hindi talaga tama yung uh, instant uh, uh, formula na magiging milyonaryo ka kung taya-kaya ka lang. So, kailangan talaga may hard work at uh, yung evils of gambling talagang it invites not only the wrath of God but also yung promotion of greed doon po sa inyong community. Kaya I commend you for that. And uh, yung isang question ko lang kasi oh, ito pong, uh, ito pong uh, panukala na ito ay uh, ecological, eh, ecological uh, industrial zone. And uh, siguro gusto ko lang matanong uh, Mayor kung Ano yung mga initiatives po ninyo? Initiatives po ninyo dyan sa, sa Leyte para ma-preserve yung ecosystem po natin and uh, paano pa matutulungan ito nitong uh, panukalang batas na ito? Mayor, salamat po. Alam po ninyo, dito sa amin sa... Dito po sa amin sa Isabel, eh, palagi po kaming binabantayan ng DENR dito kaya maganda po ang takbo ng kanalang dito na ecological system palagi po bisita namin dito ang DENR <laughs> kaya hindi po po pwede yung uh, anything that would be illegal yung po ang sinisigurado namin dito para ma-preserve namin yung magandang peace and order namin dito sa Isabel La, uh, sa, or lalo na rin sa bu sa buong uh, region 8 dahil yan po ang uh, palagi sinasabi din sa amin ng aming governor marami pong thank salamat you, thank, thank you, you ma sure. yes thank you makakatulong po ito thank salamat you. po salamat po thank you very much sa information i'm sure alam naman ni senator uh, Villanueva na ang uh, Ormoca and Leyte is a real growth point kasi nandiyan yung copper smelter nandiyan yung uh, fill para sa phosphate andiyan yung Kananga geothermal apakaraming mga malalaking project diyan kaya lahat ng government agency nakatutok lalo na't may minahan so talaga nakatutok yung DENR na nanonood at uh, uh, talagang uh, minomonitor ng maigi. I think Senator Gachalian wanted to add something. Yes, Sherwin, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, just to share with the body, no, um, last Congress 17, when I chaired this committee, uh, we requested DOF to submit their findings via the Tintalo because the Tintalo, Madam Chair, is precisely crafted and made for this type of um, uh, activities and industrial zones or eco zones. And during that time, Madam Chair, unfortunately and sadly, and sadly, hindi ginagawa ng DOF yung pag, uh, 
uh, pag uh, re-report ng tinta, marami pong kulang-kulang. We found out maraming data, kulang-kulang. At yung sagot po nila, hindi raw nagsasubmit yung mga IPAs. But then again, um, how can we be guided if we don't have analysis from DOF mismo? No? Because uh, from what I hear from DOF, they always oppose, but uh, wala naman analysis kung bakit po nag-oppose. Kaya nga po ginawa yung tinta is really to understand the cost and benefit of incentives. So, um, uh, sorry, Madam Chair, it's uh, NEDA pala who's supposed to submit that. Um, so, uh, what I suggest, Madam Chair, is to uh, re require NEDA to submit. NEDA and DOF na rin, no? analysis on tinta, but NEDA being the lead agency. So that we, be, we will be guided accordingly and we can decide uh, uh, on this type of uh, proposals, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we do need that. Um, I think speaking of the OF, uh, another question that arises would be the uh, relation of all these uh, incentives and other statements contained in this bill so that they should be aligned with CREATE since we know full well this will soon be uh, legislated. So, tama, hingin natin sa NEDA. Nandito naman yung NEDA. Narinig niyo hinihingi ni Senator Gatchalian. Mapunta na tayo sa Bulacan and um, uh, we now have, uh, so we will need some more information regarding Leite uh, as required by uh, Senator Gatchalian to recap. And uh, now uh, we proceed to Bulacan, um, the special economic zone around the new airport. I'd uh, like to invite the governor to um, uh, state the position of the province. Uh, governor Dan, Governor Dan. Yes, uh, Yes, Governor Dan Fernando, please, kung uh, ano yung posisyon ng ating uh, lalawigan hinggil yes, sa ma ating uh, eco zone. Yes, thank you very much po sa lahat po ng ating mga minamahal na senador. Of course, Senator Amy Marcos, uh, my former boss during my time ng KB Chairman po tayo. Alam po, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Tolentino, Senator Mig Sibiri, Senator, of course, ating kababayan, ating idol, Senator Joel Villanueva. Of course, sa ating mga idol natin, nakabahin din natin, Senator Rinke Chalian. And of course, ang ating mga sumahan sa industriya, ang ating uh, pelikulang Pilipino, Senator Rito Lapid. And doon po sa mga hindi pa po natin nabanggit na nandyan. Of course, sa, sa lahat po ng ating mga kasumahan sa paglilingkod, ano po, sa mga mayors ng iba't ibang lalawigan, sa governors po ng ating iba't ibang lalawigan, and of course, sa lahat po ng mga katulang natin sa paglilingkod ng mga national agencies, uh, again, magandang umaga po. Okay. Salamat po at uh, nabigyan po ng uh, pagkakataon na tayo makapagsalita tungkol po dito sa gagawing uh, uh, airport dito po sa aming lalawigan. Actually, Madam Chair, um, sa lahat po ng ating senador ay hindi po tutol ang ating lalawigan tungkol dito. Eh. But, but Madam Chair, we need, uh, meron lang po kaming clarification and correction. Ano po? Okay. So, ito at uh, uh, doon po sa kinrate na bill. Madam Chair, please allow me to quote what was written in the web that I, I came across with uh, exactly a week after granting San Miguel Corporation the congressional franchise to construct and run a domestic and international airport in our province, of course, province of Bulacan. The House of uh, Representatives approved Tuesday a bill establishing the Bulacan Airport City Special Economic Zone and uh, Freeport Authority. Um, actually, or, or BACCES FA. The provincial government of Bulacan interposed no objection on the establishment of the international airport in Bulacan, but for obvious reason that we are main beneficiary of the project in terms of, in terms of employment, investment opportunities, and new revenue, re revenue sources. In fact, the Sangguniang Palalawigan during my term as vice governor, has passed a resolution number 316, year 2018, expressing support of the PGB to the airport project. We are not discounting the possibility that the livelihood of our farmers and fisher folks will be adversely affected, not to mention the families that will have to be relocated to give way to the project and, and its impact to the environment 
is general. In general, there will be a trade-off for sure, but uh, at the end of the day, it's all about weighing the pros and cons with great consideration on the well-being of the future generation. Uh, the major engineering interventions should be employed to terminate foreseen negative effects in the environment, especially flooding. By uh, mitigating measures must be put in the front to add more uh, confidence in the in the project. Actually, ma'am, um, uh, sa 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 mga nangyayari po ngayon, um, um, uh, yung po, napag-usapan namin na noong pa lang ni, ni, ni RSA, kasama po yung ating former governor, Willie C. Alvarado, uh, noong nagpunta kami sa opisina, actually, nung nilatang niya po sa amin, ay uh, napag-usapan dito ng malinaw yung mga i-relocate. Ano po, yung mga affected na uh, mga mga constituents namin na nakatira doon sa may coastal areas ito binigyan nila ng pabahay ano po uh, pet lang meron din pong hindi malinaw dito so ma'am uh, uh, again uh, pupuli ko po yung aking nasabihin uh, ano po yung aming stand dito the establishment of the Bulacan Eco Zone to be managed by Bulacan Airport City and Special Economic Zone and Freeport Authority or of Baxes FA is a welcome idea, although I am afraid that uh, this was crafted without consultation ano po, with the provincial government. Though there are provisions in the field that the Baxespa have some actions that uh, would require consultation with the LGUs. The provincial government of Bulacan and the municipal government of Bulacan sitting as members of the board should be, should be a given. At this point, ma'am, maybe we should start Imagining how the PGB can cope with its shares in the authorized capital stocks. With the Bulacan Eco Zone, the area requirement has, bigger, has become bigger. The more it will change the total landscape, not only for of the municipality of Bulacan, but of course the whole Bulacan and adjoin, adjoining adjoining uh, LGUs as well. The meets and bounds of the proposed airport by a consortium headed by San Miguel Corporation has not been communicated with the affected LGUs as well as the feasibility studies ayan po, isa sa mga stand namin ano po, and or detailed proposal are yet to be seen and studied and understood by the Bulacan LGUs and constituents please let me emphasize that the LGUs are not ready yet not ready, uh, not yet ready with, with this Hajj project in terms of land use, road infrastructure, transportation, and communication. I would assume that the relocation of those families to be displaced will be the role of the national government or the proponent. But uh, the proponent itself, sinabi na po nila na yun po, may mga narolocate na po sila naman, in fairness. Yun. And regarding the environment, uh, environment effect, ano po? Well, sinabi na rin nila na Magdadredge ng lahat ng mga kailugan na malapit diyan. The May Kawayan, the Marilong River, the Malolos River, the Ubando, something like that. Ano po? River and uh, some rivers na makaka-apekto po diyan sa uh, na maapekto ng, uh, ng, ng kung ano man. Baka, ano po? This has been a topic of the meetings with the Bulacan LMP for so long. And uh, we are all recognized the need of the updating of the municipal NCTs. The LUPs, yan po, yung uh, ating comprehensive land use. Yan po yung aking pinutupukan ngayon kasi po dapat maging maayos lahat. Kung mapapansin natin, ano po, mga minamahal natin senador, lahat na nangyari sa atin sa bansang Pilipinas, kung makikita nyo, hindi po ito uh, naka-uniform. Ano po, hindi po naka-organize. Samot-samot. Kamukha na nangyari dito sa bypass road. Ano po, yung aming bypass road dito na kinreate. May mga nagtatayo po dito ng iba't iba. May simbahan, mayroong tindahan, at karamihan din na nakapagpatay ng mga industrial businesses. Kumbaga, sari-sari. Ano po? So, kaya nga po tinututukan namin ngayon yung comprehensive land use. Yan pong pinakamahalaga sa atin ngayon, mga minamahal kong director. Tutukan po natin. Kasi pag hindi po natin ito binigyan ng... Uh, ng uniformity, 
Kamukha, like in Japan, sa Japan naka-uniform sila. Ano po? Sama-sama ang mga residential, sama-sama ang sama-sama uh, ang mga industrial. Hindi po yung samut-samut, samut-samut na ganun. Samut-sari. Ayun po. Ayun. At saka po yung provinces, PD, PDPFP. Ayun po. Maybe this is where the national government or the proponent can help us to ensure consistency and complementation to the proposed project. Um, overall, Madam Chair, correct me if I'm wrong, since the HB 775 has been approved, not sure, iba-iba sinasabi sa internet, but I will check tomorrow po. Mag-check po tayo mga ito. Perhaps it's about time that the LGU in Bulacan, LGU in Bulacan, uh, get the total picture of the Bulacan Echo Zone, which com covers the Bulacan Airport so that the LGU in return can update, update their PNUP to plans responsive in, to the demands of the project, which I have said, with the child, with the change, the total landscape of Bulacan. Okay. Actually, ma'am, and in the summarized po nito, ma'am, hindi pa po ready yung ating mga kalsada. Kailangan mabigyan po na lino. Actually, wala pa po kami uh, project po po sa na natatanggap. Ano po, wala pa po kami feasibility report na natatanggap. So, kailangan maganda rin po yung ibang province, ibang reviews natin. Like, the Bukawi, the Binto, the Marilao, the Mayroon. Yes. Ano po? Okay, uh, okay. Tungkol dito. Kaya po, kinakailangan ma'am, Papag-alala po natin maganda dito. Although this is a 2,500 hectares. Ano po? At makalupin po ito. At makapagbibigay po ito ng magandang income at trabaho sa atin. Magkakaroon ng direct and indirect jobs. But uh, tingnan po natin, ma'am, isa pa. Ma'am, sorry po, Madam Chair. Um, yung pong saan inalagay yung aming mga fisher folks? Oo, bibigay ng trabaho sa loob. Pati hindi naman nila 40 yan, ma'am. Huwag natin tanggalin all do, maganda po ang pananaw ni, ni ating kaibigang si RSA, si Ramon Ang, na gawing uh, seafood capital ang Bulacan regarding that. Ano po? So napakaganda po nun. Kung gagawin natin seafood capital ang lalawigan ng Bulacan, ito lang po mga minamahal ko, Senador, Madam Chair. Ano po? Kung gagawin po yung seafood capital, kaya kailangan, ayusin natin po, saan natin idalaga yung ating mga mga PCMR, yung ating mga namamalayas daan, Ano po, yun na kailangan, tingnan natin mabuti. Then, Thank you. Ano naman natin, ito po nagkaroon tayo ng pandemia. Kitang-kita po natin, ha, yung essentials ang pinakamalaga sa lahat. Palusugan, although economic, yung economic, economic, economic natin, nakatutok din po tayo. Kaya po kung makikinigin itong bulakan ito, okay. ito, kailangan lamang, itukan po natin, yung comprehensive land use, itukan po natin, Tupos na question ng mga ilalulukay para na pumulit na. Okay. Question nyo is din po ating mga blayas dahan. You Thank know. you. So ma'am, talamat po. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much, Governor. At uh, we've been honored by your presence. Uh, Damang-dama ko yung, uh, yung sentimiento kasi ang tagal ko, Governor. Laging hindi pa napansin yung host. Eh mismo ikaw yung host na LGU. Ikaw mga kinakonsulta ng puspusan. Ayan. Ay, yung ang dalawa natin kasama. Yung kasama nyo, si Senator... Uh, ay, ay, po, kasama ay. natin, Senator... Uh, uh, gati, si Senator uh, Gatila. Ayan po, si, uh, si Senator Gatileba. Ating idol, yan kasama rin po yan sa pagbubuo namin dyan. Ay, kailan yun eh. So, malalim ang paghugot tungkol sa LGU. Siguro tanungin natin si Attorney Melissa Tagarda and Mr. Ed Gardona kung sino ang uh, gustong uh, sumagot sa panig naman ng San Miguel. Kulang daw kayo sa konsulta. Hindi daw ninyo sinasabihan. Linakihan na yung lugar. Uh, nagbago na yung sitwasyon. At uh, hindi pa rin nila alam na marerelocate pala yung pagkarami-rami. SMC, please. Pwedeng sumagot. Isa sa inyo. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, this is uh, Egay Donya from San Miguel. Uh, Governor, um, we will consider those. Actually, we have been consulting with, uh, with uh, Penro. We have been consulting with the... Uh, representatives of your constituents, but if if some of them are missed, we are ready to, once again, uh, initiate consultation. 
Because you know, perhaps, Mr. That... Mr. Dona, perhaps Mr. Dona, you should do it on an official basis. Mag-present kayo kay Gob at yung buong SP, uh, sampu ng kanyang LMP para marinig naman nila yung kabuuhan. Kasi kung bits and pieces dun sa empleyado sa Kapitolyo, dun sa mga tao-tao dun sa lugar na pinagsasakupan, palagay ko hindi official yun, ano? Uh... Actually, we we had some official. We also had some official consultations, but uh, again, I I will defer to the advice of the governor to once again uh, hold a um, more comprehensive, perhaps uh, official discussions with this. Uh, wala pero kayo na sa submit ni master plan ni FS. Meron po kami ng submit sa DOTR. And these were also... National agency yun, e paano yung uh, may-ari, yung lokal? Ma'am, we, we are in the process of uh, seeking approvals for the ECC. And along with that, we have been consulting also with stakeholders and representatives from, from the province. Sir Edgar, uh, ma'am, Madam Chair? Yes, go, go, go ahead. Uh, pwede po bang magsalita ng konti kay Sir Edgar? <laughs> yes, go. Boss, ma, uh, Sir, kailangan din po ng provincial government. Actually, kami po, po, kami po nakakakita ng lahat. So, kailangan yes, po kami magkaroon ng consultation sa amin, sa ating PPDO, ano po, sa planning. Kasi po, uh, Sir, uh, kailangan maiayos natin lahat ito. Ano po, well, katulang natin itong mga senador natin. Actually, the two senators are here in the back of the room that will be the best of us. That's why, Sir Edgar, we need to consult for a plan to consult. We don't know where we are going, but we don't know where we are going. We don't know where we are going, but we don't know where we are going. We don't know where we are going, but we don't know where we are going. We don't know where we are going. Of course, we need to know where we are going. We need to know where we are going. Oh, please comply, uh, Mr. Donna, and also SMP, SMC uh, Attorney Tagada. Would you like to add something, Pa? Um, yes, yes, Senator. Good morning, Pa, Governor. Um, yes. We really note po yung concerns nyo. We are um, very much willing, Pa, definitely, kasi po yung magiging partner namin in this endeavor. So we did not mean to, in any way, um, um, put you aside in this endeavor because definitely we will be needing your support po. Um, we are very willing to give you the necessary studies and the plans will definitely be consulted with you, um, Governor. So um, rest assured, um, San Miguel will comply with your request and we will be at um, the soonest possible time um, most willing to um, pay you a courtesy call so that we can give you more information about Alagay the project. Alagay ko, hindi yung courtesy call. Kailangan iharap na ninyo yung plano. Makikita fact, na yung mapa, ano yung kabuuan ng uh, lugar. Kasi marami pa lang nasasakop na mayo na walang kamalay-malay eh. Um, we are ready right now to present a plan as regards the airport, will, which will be a vital um, part of this eco zone. If the group would like to see that, we are um, ready to present that to um, the Honorable Governor and to the members um, in the meeting this morning, in the hearing this morning. Palagay ko, dun sa lokal yan na importante. Kami, lahat kami na nagpapaspasan at katakot-takot yung budget hearing namin. Thank you very much for that. While we're at it, pangungunahan ko na si Senator Villanueva at uh, mukhang galit na galit nung isang linggo. Si uh, Brother Eddie Villanueva, dahil hindi siya pinagsalita na ayaw na ayaw niya magkaroon ng sugalan. Tama ba, Senator Joel? get the chance to uh, hear his speech, Madam Chair, but uh, I think uh, it's understandable where Brother Eddie is coming. That's right. So I think uh, when it comes to uh, creating more casinos or in inviting more pogos uh, here in the country, specifically in the uh, province of Bulacan, medyo tataasan mo talaga ang kilay. And I'm not only speaking of uh, Brother Eddie, but also the uh, other a lot of religious organizations here in Bulacan, and I think the good governor can attest to that. 
Oo, hindi lang naman yung religious sector eh. Maraming sector din na nag-o-object dahil sa peace and order, katulad ni Mayor Medina dyan sa Isabel Leyte. Okay, what's your position on that? May we hear the official San Miguel position on gambling in the Bulacan Aero City zone? Attorney uh, Tagarda, may masasabi ka ba? Um, in San Miguel Corporation po, we are not in favor po of gambling and pogos and all those in the eco zone. But we also have to consider po that the board will be the one in charge of these locators. So, um, yung part po ng, yung mga members po ng Bulacan. Um, parang, ex- gulang, parang ang gulang ng sagot. Sagot ng abogado yan. Hindi, I just, but <laughs> San Miguel po, I would like to put po in black and white na San Miguel Corporation po is not in favor of these. But, ano yung but? Hindi ko na get yung but. Yung but, 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 but and I emphasize ko bang po yung lawyer hat ko is the one talking that the eco zone will be governed loudly, by San, loudly. not by San Miguel Corporation but the eco zone will be governed by the province province of governor uh, province of Bulacan together with other sectors of government and they will be the ones who will be running this eco zone and not San Miguel Corporation is uh, San Miguel's policy we, we will not allow gambling and pogos on the part of San Miguel. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I think Senator Madam Chair, Jans, uh, Madam Chair, Senator Madam Chair, Senator uh, Joel Ulet, and uh, our uh, Majo, our leader, uh, Senator Subiri. So, uh, Senator Sherwin, please. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll give way to the Nakakatanda, the majority. Walang ganyanan. To the older senators. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, sir. Senator Joel, please go ahead first and then I'll, I'll follow after. Uh, basically, if it's all right, just the one statement. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Siguro in, in years of service, hindi yung age, kasi magkakaedad lang tayo lahat. Mukha na akong matanda dahil sa COVID, namuti yung buko. ko. Pero uh, I'd like to put on record, uh, Madam Chair, na in most of the businesses that San Miguel Corporation go into, uh, gambling is neither one of them. Uh, I've had long conversations Tama. with the former chairman of uh, San Miguel Corporation, uh, yeah. former ambassador Dan Ning Kuanko, as well as, of course, chairman and president, CEO uh, Ramon Ang. And uh, personally, in our conversations, they are not in favor of gambling as their core business or any business, uh, for that matter, that they invest in. And the uh, pro-Filipino, yan, so definitely... Pagdating sa mga pogo, galit na galit po ang San Miguel Corporation dyan, uh, they would rather invest in Filipinos. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's right. a matter of yeah, matter of uh, first uh, uh, experiences that I've had with the uh, the policymakers of San Miguel, Madam Chair. Yes, Majo, in uh, in uh, full uh, agreement po. Dahil uh, mula sa pol, hindi naman nila pinus- pinasukan, maski saan ang uh, sugal. Kaya siguro, rest assured tayo na maganda yung investor ninyo. Talagang hindi mahilig sa uh, pogo or uh, sa mga sugalan. So with that, we call on Senator Joel once again. Are you reassured ba? Ito may older tambal. <laughs> one year lang ma'am, one year older lang ma'am. Sige, sige. Uh, if uh, there are no further comments, perhaps we can ask about the OTR and DTI. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Petrolian, please. Yeah. Just to, just to, to uh, follow up, uh, in the absence of any, I, I just have the the uh, bill, no? but I don't have any materials on the echo zone itself, the laki ng echo zone, what type of echo zone. Wala binigay eh. Wala rin binigay sa amin eh. So I just want to, I just have very basic questions, Madam Chair, to San Miguel. Um, to San Miguel, sino may-ari ng lupa? Who owns the land? No? Because we're talking about, um, in the bill, it talks about airport, airport city, and adjacent lands. No? So who owns the land? Who owns the land? Madam Chair? Uh, Attorney Tejada, Te- at Tagarda, would you like to uh, answer who owns the land? The owner po on record is Silvertide Holding Corporation. Silvertide Holding Corporation. That is a subsidiary of San Miguel Corporation. Um, it has the right over the land 
um, and it was in um, anticipation of this project. And then, attorney, the uh, the uh, authority in this case, uh, Baksefa. What is the relationship between the landowner and the authority? In relation to Baksefa, um, Baksefa, Your Honor, um, the actual land and its meets and bounds will still be determined by a presidential proclamation in accordance with the Ecozone Act. Um, the actual um, land that will be occupied by the Ecozone will still be determined. I, um, the owner that you I was referring to earlier was in relation to the airport and the airport city. Okay, but the but the authority covers the airport, the airport city, and adjacent lands, correct? Yes, Your Honor. So without uh, without talking about the meets and bounds, yes, it will cover the lands of Silver Tides. Yes, Your Honor. So the authority, which is a government entity, will be the administrator of Silver Tides properties. I'm sorry, you're asking of the administrator of the EcoZone authority. authority. The authority, who is the administrator, will administer the lands owned by Silver Tides. The administrator of the EcoZone, yes. And the land, of course, where the EcoZones will be put up. Yes. So, meaning the landowner is Silver Tides, the administrator is government. Yes, if it will be, if we're talking of the um, Bulacan Eco Zone Authority, yes. Yes, so, so in that case, um, in, the, in this case, the Eco Zone calls for infrastructure building also. So, government will build the infrastructure. Inside the Eco Zone, the um, locators inside the government no, the locators. The government will build the perimeter fences. Isn't it the echo zone, the administrator who will be in charge of that? Yes, that will be the okay. echo zone administrator, yes. Right, so it's in, in short, in simple terms, government will administer the echo zone, government will build the infrastructure, but the landowner will still remain with the private sector. Um, Is that the structure? Not exactly, Your Honor, because um, Silver Tide Holdings owns the land in relation to the airport and the airport city. The Eco Zone um, is composed of the airport, the airport city, and other areas where the locators will be. Correct. So the authority covers the airport and the airport city. Yes. In, so, in, which, the, in which the title of the land is in the private sector. Yes, that's right. So, so, so uh, the, 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 well, my point is, the administrator and the landowner is different. They're both different entities. Yes, in relation to airport and the airport city. My point, my point, Your Honor, is that the eco zone can comprise of land that will not be that will not be lo belonging to the airport and the airport city. Yeah, I know, I know that. But in this, in the law, it covers the airport and the airport city. That's already that's already definite. Eh? Attorney? Uh, Beth? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, na wala po sila. Attorney Tagarda? Nagkaroon yata sila, Senator, ng, ano, ng problema sa internet connection nila. Ano? Madam Chair, maybe we can go proceed with the other resource persons until they okay, join us. Maybe we just ask uh, uh, if we can, if we do not retrieve Attorney Tagarda, um, Mr. Donna uh, for SMC, can we have a uh, more detailed organizational or uh, uh, holding chart of the corporations involved and uh, particular with regard to uh, uh, administration authority as well as land holdings? Uh, Madam Chair. Madam oh, Chair. Yes? 
Yes, Sen Nancy. Uh, just an additional request then, Kasi itong point na ni-raise ni Senator Sherwin, ito rin yung point niya when we were discussing okay. the airport. Uh, yeah. Sana meron pa sila pwede ipakita sa atin na mapa na more or less. Kasi parang laging naguguluhan na ako dun sa airport city, dun sa, di ba? Para sa sinasabi niya, part, minsan sa sinasabi, dun sa sagot, part yung airport city. Tapos pag may itatanong si Senator Sherwin, ang sagot, hindi na siya part ng airport city. So siguro ang paganda kung meron talagang mapping para makita natin visually kung ano ba talaga yung pinag-uusapan natin na lugar. Yun lang, okay. Madam Chair. Uh, being the operation officer, I'm certain that Mr. Donna can submit that, no? What are these uh, overlapping entities? Because uh, as the governor said er earlier, eh, mukhang lumalaki pa yata at hindi na sigurado yung mga boundary nito. Okay, Mr. Donna, you're on mute. I can't hear a word. Madam Chair, if I may laymanize the quick response to the query. Oh, sige. Okay, um, in the franchise bill, there was a, a delineation of what is earmarked for airport. And adjacent to it will be the airport city. We have made available a total of 2,500 hectares. Those were under the possession of Silver Tides, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of San Miguel. The entity that will develop the airport, which is given the, you know, the, the grant of uh, development rights, is SM Aero City. And between Silver Tides and SM Aero City, we have an agreement that allows Aero City to take possession of the land, develop, and then operate it over a period of 50 years. Yeah, so, we have no question. We're not inquiring about the development right now, yung land holdings lang, kasi sapaw-sapaw. Airport land, ang sinasabi mo, yung airport city is the same as the airport land? No, no, Madam Chair. Ay na nga. The airport... <laughs> yeah, wag mo na sa developer, wala pa tayo. Okay. Yeah, we will submit a, we will submit a map for consideration of the body. But oh, alin ba talaga yung airport? Asan ba talaga yung airport city? At alin ba yung eco zone na pinalalawak ninyo na hindi naman ninyo pag-aari? Yung tama ba yun? Kundi uh, sakop ninyo yung iba't ibang LGU na walang kamalay-malay daw yung mga mayor, sabi ni Gob. The, the airport city, Madam Chair, is uh, definitely uh, uh, delineated. It is now the subject of a detailed engineering design, the bits and bounds of which will be finalized soon. With but, but, but I'm talking about the two other areas involved, yung city, hindi lang yes, yung airport, at saka yung eco zone. Yes, ma yes Madam Chair. Oh, mm -hmm. so, may I follow up therefore on uh, Senator Gachelian and Senator Vinay's uh, request that a map as well as their uh, corporate organization please be provided kasi medyo nalilito kami at mukhang pati ang local government magtatanong din. Okay, okay uh, siguro we can just call uh, the DOTR. Uh, since we're talking about the airport, and dito ba si Yusek Reynoso at saka si Yusek Yebra of legal ng DOTR? Your Honor, yes. Uh, Yusek Reynoso here? Yes, yes. Ay, sorry. Uh, Yusek Yebra, Yusek Reynoso, uh, gusto lang namin maliwanagan yung land development ng buong eco zone o ng uh, airport city, sagot ng gobyerno, pati yung administrative cost. Tama po ba yun? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Under Secretary Reynoso, the development of the uh, 2,500 is for the account and responsibility of the proponents on Miguel and its partners. 
So the uh, DOTR, no, as the uh, concession grantor, do not have any responsibility for the development of this uh, land for the. Uh... Yes, I understand. What happens in the echo, what happens in the airport city as well as the eco zone? Sino maglalandeb niyan yung babakuran, lalagyan ng kalye, and so on. Well, we, we understand, no? It's the responsibility of the board or the uh, eco zone that will be created. But in so far as DOTR is concerned, our responsibility is only with respect to the airport, no? Which consists of 2,500 hectares. Uh, I see. Half of which is the uh, airport, which involves the runway, the terminals, and the other ones are related activities to the airport, such as uh, hangars, the uh, right. Support air, air, aviation maintenance, you know, and uh, all right. of the uh, related industries in the airport. Okay, so yun lang ang sagot ng DOTR. Uh, but you have no awareness about airport city, uh, which apparently uh, enlarges the airport uh, footprint, as well as the eco zone. Tama po ba yun? po kaming uh, participation do sa eco zone madam chair okay i think there's only one more resource Ma madam for... chair sorry yes senator binay just a clarification kasi nga medyo magulo nga yung mga terms yung eco zone ba will be inside the airport city but not necessarily the whole airport city tama po ba or will the airport Para city balita. be ah. the whole so the whole airport city, siya yung magiging eco zone? Mr. Donna, you're recognized. Madam Chair? <clears throat> okay, let, we can take a parallelism with the uh, park. Yep. Park being a free port and eco zone as well. And within that eco zone uh, is contained the airport. And also within that eco zone, you have the evolving urban area which we refer to now as the new clark, clark. Uh, eco city so the eco zone uh, madam chair is is a larger parcel of land and contained within it are the support logistics infrastructure as well as the other related developments the airport city in particular ako po, Mr. Dola, kaya naman niya ito, mag-present ka. Bonggang-bonggang na lito ako doon. Hindi lang si Governor Dugan. Pamihilo na rin. Okay, uh, I think you better uh, submit some kind of map that uh, is within our comprehension at nalito kami ng todo. Okay, tawakin ko na lang yung DTI, Director Angelita Arcelliana. Beth, is Director Arcelliana around? Concept yes, uh, good morning. Yes, po. Yes, po. Nandyan po. Okay. Yeah, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. The yes, DTI, Director Arcelliana. Uh, like, yes, yeah, perhaps you like could to, tell us uh, the DTI. Yeah, the DTI. So, uh, please proceed, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, the DTI, yeah. The DTI, DOI would like to signify its I'm sorry, hindi ko kayo narinig. Support to the bill. Okay. And uh, we will be submitting our official positions on this, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you we very much. We support the bill. Thank you very much, uh, DTI. Thank you very much, DOTR. I think that was fairly clear cut. Ang uh, kailangan natin, I think we've got Attorney Tagarda back. Uh, perhaps we we'll disconnected your yeah. honor. No, so, no problem with that. I think uh, with that we need uh, some submissions um, of the map per uh, Senator Binay, some indication of corporate organization per uh, Senator Gachalian. And uh, I highly encourage you to please speak urgently to the provincial government and uh, uh, the SP as well as their mayors. Kasi tulad namin, pati pala sila, eh, walang alam at litong-lito. Uh, Senator Gachalian, please. Yes, Your Honor, we will comply. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, another basic question. Ito, very basic lang ito. Uh, Susan Miguel, what is the relationship between the franchise and also the eco zone because the franchise covers ito binabasa ko franchise covers the airport correct and then yes, it also covers the airport city correct yes your honor 
But the ito zone bill covers the same, the airport and the airport city. So what is the relationship oh. between the franchise and the eco zone? Because there are some overlaps. For example, the tax incentives. In the franchise, it has extensive discussion on the tax incentives. If you go to the eco zones, it also has tax incentives. So how do you reconcile this, this two attorney? Yes, Your Honor. The franchise covers the airport and the airport city, and those two will be inside the echo zone. So the echo zone is actually a bigger um, area. It will um, cover the um, investments and the locators inside the um, echo zone that um, are not or not um, all, all directly related to the airport and the airport city. The franchise just covers the airport and the airport city, meaning um, the, um, in the um, investments inside the airport city only are um, related to the airport. They will all have to be um, integrally related to the airport, whereas the locators inside the echo zone, uh, maybe those that are there for investors or for um, um, foreign investors, but they are not always related to the airport um, that will be um, under the concession of San Miguel Aero City. Likewise, in terms of taxes, um, the airport and the airport city, the, its taxes will be specifically governed by the franchise whereas um, the tax, taxes and the investments inside the eco zone um, are covered by the omnibus, omnibus investment code. So um, if we put it simply, the airport and the airport city are two parts of the eco zone. The eco zone is a bigger portion and the two, um, the airport and the airport city, which is covered by another franchise, are just parts of the eco zone. Uh, attorney, I, may I suggest to reconcile the one of the important provisions, the tax provisions, because now we're talking about EO226, the Omnibus Investment Code, code as the governing law over the airport and the airport city, but the no, franchise no. has extensive tax provisions also. The so tax, which, yeah. one, which one will the airport be governed? Which the, law? Yeah, the be airport... Governed? Your honor will be governed by the franchise that will be um, inclusive of the tax incentives given by the franchise. And those will seize upon the determination of a competent authority that the San Miguel Aero City has already um, recovered its investment code, whereas, sorry, investment um, cost, whereas the Eco Zone is governed by the Omnibus Investment Code. Um, there's no cap, so to speak. Um, as to the fiscal incentives under the eco zone. I, I know that, but it has to be, in, in, if you look at the law side by side, you have to reconcile that because from a, the standpoint of the collector, which is the government, which law will I use over the airport, the airport city and its components? For example, locators, airport city, and then Lufthansa. Which one will I use, the EO226 or the franchise? The franchise, your or, your honor, because that's inside the airport and the airport city. Yeah, but uh, you, but the the eco zone also covers the airport city. I understand your I understand your concern, um, but I think that the for as long as we're talking of a locator inside the airport and the airport city, and the locator has an integral um, role that is indispensable to the airport, that should um, be considered under the franchise, which is... Uh, attorney, I might just suggest, Madam Chair, to look, look into this so that we don't uh, create confusion in the future. Uh, that's, all, that's one of my observations. And also, the airport city is also not defined. No? It's only now that we appreciated that the airport city is exclusive to businesses or activities related to the operations of the airport. In my initial understanding, the airport city will have other things, the residential, other 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 uh, other uh, facilities. So that's not uh, defined here in uh, the uh, franchise. So my point of the matter, Tony, is um, th there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, 
overlaps, as well there's also a lot of uh, undefined terms that might lead to future confusion. So my suggestion, Madam Chair, is to look at that so that we don't create uh, confusion in, in the future. I mean, the project, as I mentioned before, I, I support it because we, need, we badly need an airport, but we, also make, we have to make sure that uh, it doesn't create confusion, especially on taxation regimes. And then to add to that, we have create pa later on that we'll be discussing. So that's another confusion, no? So just to suggest, that, uh, just a suggestion to the committee, Madam Chair. Yes, well taken, uh, Senator Gachalian. Uh, we will require from SMC their submission of the information requested, um, a clarification on the borders of the franchise, a uh, uh, basic organization chart of the landowners, uh, administrators, as well as other managers of the project, and thirdly, per Senator Binay, a map of these overlapping entities known as the airport, the airport city, and further the echo zone uh, with other landowners and LGUs. Um, I am told that the CAAP sent someone to discuss the airport as well. Is there a CAAP uh, uh, representative whom I uh, failed to recognize and has something to add? Uh, Beth, uh, I'm not able to see you. Uh, Senator, Senator, there is the, uh, no, the attorney Antonio Gonzalez, yes, uh, the acting so chief please, of the air traffic service. Please, anything to add to the discussion, please? Uh, Kaap, you're recognized. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Attorney Antonio Gonzalez here. But if it's about the airport itself, uh, I would rather defer. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's very, very noisy. I don't know where uh, the sound is coming from. Is that the Senate? Okay. Yes, uh, Attorney uh, from Kaa, please. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, I am with the air traffic uh, service and we are mostly concerned with uh, airport uh, operations. But if it has to do with the design and the uh, uh, topography of the airport, uh, I would uh, defer to Mr. Raul Glorioso. He is also here now, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Glorioso, I think uh, the governor raised certain questions about the drainage of uh, rivers, the dredging of certain rivers uh, that uh, would uh, be part of the airport. Is that correct? Yeah, good morning, Madam Senator, and, and to all senators that are present yes. in this hearing. Yeah, uh, I do understand that uh, San Miguel Corporation prepared a feasibility study where, in fact, it will be considered also the uh, condition of the existing rivers, which is uh, it also part of the uh, of the uh, mitigation by the DNR, there are the, there's already a uh, there's uh, already a uh, meetings that has been undertaken uh, with the DNR uh, okay. to protect those rivers that are uh, affected by the project. All right, thank you. So um, with that, uh, Comsec, I think we don't have any uh, other resource persons. Uh, unless our senators would like to add something. Uh, please, yes. Is there someone? Uh, unless the senators would like to add something. I think we are all in support of the uh, Bulacan Echo Zone. However, however, as, uh, as um, demonstrated and outlined by uh, Senator Gachalian, Senator Binay, it is important that we all um, comprehend the magnitude and the uh, footprint of this uh, project legally as well as uh, in the uh, provincial footprint as well. So, yun na lang hihingin natin, pending the submission of all this information, I believe that uh, the support uh, for the Bulacan Echo Zone surrounding the new airport is overwhelming with the reassurance as well of the SMC that there will be no gambling, at least uh, as far as they're concerned and to the best of their ability. So, to all of you, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much for attending this hearing. 
for the special participation of GovDan and uh, all our senators. Maraming salamat po and please submit all those position papers and information we require. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Governor? Magandang umaga po. Magandang umaga po. Thank you, Madam Chair. My colleagues. See you in the next See you in the other hearing. See you in the other hearing. Bye. Bye, Dr. Joel. Thank you.